Hey, what's up everyone? We've got another episode of Tesla Tweets heading your way right now with information updated about Tesla's version 10 software that's being released, the Model S Plaid, and more. Stay tuned. Looking for a USB drive that's ready to go for Tesla Cam? Check out puretesla.com, where we offer micro SD options as well as iOS versions that work directly on your iPhone. We have hundreds of great five star customer reviews and an ever growing assortment of Tesla Cam drives, including micro SD, Lightning, and also a solid state drive. There's even one for those of you that have just gotten the new Jada Hub. Check out puretesla.com for more information. What's up everyone, Jeff here with Pure Tesla. It is great to have you join us on another episode of Tesla Tweets. Let's get started. In a tweet from Tesla Rati, we got information about the reported outcome of the competition between the Tesla Model S Plaid trim level and the Porsche Taycan. We apparently have some information that the prototype Model S at the Nürburgring destroyed the Porsche Taycan in almost a 20 second differential, says the veteran German motoring magazine. Elon responded to that stating that it's a start. We expect those track times to be beaten by the actual production seven seat Model S Plaid variant, which goes into production around October or November of next year. So we're certainly excited to see that happen and get additional information about how that will play out. Viv on Twitter responded to all of this, asking Elon, so I guess the new Roadster will easily beat the all-time record of 644.97. Elon responded, absolutely. So no question there, he is absolutely expecting the 2020 Roadster to beat the all-time record at Nürburgring of 644.97. Tesla owners of Silicon Valley asked then, do you think the Model 3 performance could beat the Taycan? Elon said no, but it would be very close, to which then there was a follow-up by Elon Accessories saying, very close at a fraction of the cost? I'll take the Model 3, please. Elon responded, actually, the Model 3 would beat the Taycan at Nürburgring over multiple laps, as it has more range. Good out there. I like it. Viv then gets another response from Elon when she asks, do you think that you're able to squeeze out more performance via over the air update, or is that pretty much maxed out? Elon responded that you never know. Quite a leading response, but you never know what Tesla's capable of, and that is evident every time they push a new release. Friend of the show, Ryan McCaffrey, tweeted out that you release the Plaid Model S first, learn from it, and then use the learnings to make the 2021 Roadster even better. Elon responded, exactly. So I do see that the Model S Plaid is a great way for them to tweak all the additional settings that will be up and coming in the next Roadster. To ask some specific questions about Elon's tweet about the seven-seater Model S, Daniel Cardenas asked on Twitter, return of the rear-facing third row or will it be front-facing in reference to the Plaid Model S? Elon responded that it's rear-facing but roomier. He said it's great for family gatherings and that he did a road trip across America with his five boys and Tallulah in the seven-seat Model S years ago. Zane asked, will the seven-seat layout be a new layout? And Elon responded that no, it's the original five forward-facing seats plus two rear smaller seats. The new rear seats, however, will accommodate larger passengers than before. Switching gears a little bit, in reference to the Tesla Theater and the instructional videos that are now released there, Bonnie Norman on Twitter said, please make these videos available through the Tesla account. So once you're reserved, people can start watching before they pick up the car. Less time required for education at delivery, engaged new owners while waiting, and earn some free supercharging for the video completed successfully before delivery. Seems like a good out for uh, new owners to be able to take advantage of that. Elon responded that they are available through the app, but they do need to make them easier to find. So a good discourse there about those tutorial videos. Hopefully we'll see those more prominently focused in the coming days. Friend of the show, Test Letter, tweets to Elon, how's the testing going, in reference to version 10? When is it going to be rolled out to folks who purchased full self-driving? And Elon responded that they are fixing several minor bugs and a regression in highway driving, so probably early to mid next week. And that was last week, so I would expect it in really any day now. So stay tuned for additional information about that. 
get a little bit more specific in the release of certain features. Somebody asked, is version 10 coming out this week for full self-driving and then autopilot improvements the next week? And Elon responded that no, it's one integrated release. To continue with the version 10 feature discussion, Tesla Ratty tweeted out an article talking about the I'm feeling hungry or lucky button that's now included in version 10 and saying that it is a local business booster. Elon responded to that stating that feeling lucky, Google tribute, or hungry are 100% intended for maximum enjoyment of a Tesla owner. If an owner has a destination charger, that's a plus, but the car should only route there if the location is great. This will be a hit and miss initially, but should hone towards excellent over time. So it is something that will continue learning, and I'm really excited to see this one play out. A shout out to Party in Camping Mode asking for an update there, Elon responding that it is to come in 10.1. So Party in Camping Mode won't make the initial release of version 10, but you should expect to see it in version 10.1. Test letter notes that the version 10 early release version has enhanced summon for those with full self-driving and hardware 3, which is a full self-driving computer. Somebody then, in response to that, asked, so does that mean that we won't get enhanced summon with version 2.5 hardware? Asking for a friend. Elon responded that Smart Summon, as it's been renamed, will work on all version 2.0 and later hardware in wide release. So that's great news for those with hardware version 2.0. You will see enhanced or smart summon as it's now called once that gets to a wide release. With a shout out to version 10, but also a feature enhancement request, Aaron on Twitter asks Elon, thoughts about a mode for autopilot that could hug the inside shoulder? Context, be in a traffic jam in the number one lane and motorcycles are splitting lanes one and two. All cars in lane are biased towards the left side of the lane, except for Tesla that's on autopilot, which is dead center in the middle of the lane. Elon responded that lane offset should be much better in version 10.0. Tesla tested on Twitter asked Elon, can standard range plus owners get premium connectivity upgrade for Netflix and YouTube for when version 10 releases? Elon responded that it will discuss this with his product team next week, being this week, but probably. Additionally, then, Tesla tested, asked, can that include rear heated seats, satellite maps, and traffic? Also, do you have an ETA on full self-driving lease discount dying to upgrade to it? Elon said, next quarter. Most specifically, probably relating to the full self-driving lease discount, which means that, you know, you get a discount on your lease for getting full self-driving because of the fact that full self-driving options might not be available up until the three years when you give the car back. And to round out the conversation about version 10, the Tesla show tweeted out some information about the newest early access build that has a few more version 10 features. Those namely being Dashcam now saves the rear view camera as well, which is great news, something that a lot of people have been asking for. Additionally, Bluetooth audio now uses album art from the phone. You can do audio at 48 kilohertz, which requires iOS 13. That is something that is apparently something from iOS 13 itself. Those who have been on the public beta have seen that for a while now in the Tesla music uh, app, but um, it's on more wide release now, so people are starting to see that more. We don't know if that's necessarily an indication of something from Tesla's version 10. Additionally, many more settings will be saved to the driver profile. Now, those things, you know, nearly everything, as they go on to mention, temperature change, heated seats, display brightness, suspension lowering, etc. So that's very exciting news about the more information that is shared to your driver profile and saved. Jason on Twitter, as another feature request for version 10, asks, can we please have AC air direction control tied to the driver profile? Wife moves around every time she drives the car and it takes a while to get it back into place. Elon responds, yes. So look for that as another component of something that will be tied to the driver profile. Tesla Mother Frunker on Twitter released a new version of their web app. Very exciting stuff. You can get the original Diablo playing on your Tesla. Who would have thought? Tonight's update included, tonight was last week, included 20% more games, 48 new countries for the plate game, updated homepage, minor bug fixes. Might take 40 hours to get, but by now you should be able to see it. And Elon got a response in there saying, whoa, cool. Probably in relation to Diablo, which is a pretty awesome addition to that web app. So if you're interested in checking that out, head on over to Twitter, mfrunker, and you can get the information about their web app. 
Congratulations to Tesla and the Model 3 specifically. The Model 3 had earned the IIHS 2019 Top Safety Pick Plus Award, earning a top score across all eight tests covering crash worthiness, occupant protection, crash avoidance, and headlight systems. It's a great, great honor for the Model 3. A very, very safe all-around vehicle. That will wrap it up for this episode of Tesla Tweets. I'm sure there is a lot of great information to come as version 10 makes more of a wide release, or at least hits early access in the coming week. We'll continue to share the great information here. If you have any questions, comments, anything about what we've shared on the show today, please make sure you leave that down in the comments below, and we're certainly looking forward to engaging with you there. Till next time, you can always reach me on email, jeff at puretesla.com. You can find me on Twitter, at puretesla. And my shameless plug, if you ever need a Tesla cam drive, we've certainly tested all the ones that are out there and we provide a package that is truly plug and play. It comes out of the envelope, plug it into your car, and you've got Tesla cam. So you can check that out at puretesla.com. Until next time, guys, hope you have a great week. Take care.